ear of corn on the cob. Before you eat it, you stab it with those little forks. That's exactly what they do to these cut tree logs. They stab them and then spin them on a lathe. Then there's a blade that shaves a super fine layer of the wood off, kind of like shaving a slice of cheese from a cheese wheel. From end to glorious end, and they're able to harness the natural, true beauty of the species of wood in question. Well, Robin, so far the cabinets look marvelous, don't they? They look brand new. Okay, so what's the next phase or the next step in this process? All right, the next step is to uh, hang the doors and put on the drawer fronts. So one silent feature about these doors is the hinges that are used, because your old hinges were completely visible. Right. Nowadays, most cabinet manufacturers are using these European-style hinges because they're, they're fully hidden. It folds right into itself. So here are your beautifully crafted drawer fronts. That's a mortise and tenon joinery. Fine quality, three-quarter inch real wood material. And this is going to get screwed right to the false front of the body of the drawer. Okay, you're going to line that up. Okay, so it's about as far as we can go today. I'm so impressed with your work. I well, really, thank really you very am. Much. Thank you. Coming up on Kitchen Impossible, I'll show you a way to protect your floor and enhance the look. So Good. it's going to bring all these beautiful colors to life. Perfect. And a small change makes a huge difference. It just is a whole different kind of feeling in here. And here's a quick question for you. What's the most common textured slate used in kitchen renovations? So, what's the most common textured slate used in kitchen renovations today? The answer is A, clefting. Slate tiles are available with a natural cleft surface, often called split tiles. The natural surface of a split tile has the rugged topography of broken stone and provides slip resistance. Well, as of today, we are 11 days into this kitchen renovation and we have made so many changes in here. Over the past few days, we were busy working on building the knee wall for the island. We patched up the drywall and then taped its back. Then we got busy installing the gorgeous slate tile floors. So at last, today we're going to be prepping to finally install your wall oven. It's the moment of truth, Mark. Moment of truth. What we have here are two standard base cabinets, mm -hmm. and then this here is generally used as a wall cabinet. Okay. We're going to be modifying it and building it or using it as a base for the wall oven to sit on. Okay. Okay, so we need to modify this cabinet by adding a toe kick, okay. and we need to recess it the same depth as the base cabinets here. And it's three and three-eighths of an inch. Okay, by modifying the cabinet, it's now even with the two base cabinets, which are flanking the oven. And then right on top of this, we'll build another platform, okay. and the oven itself will be sitting somewhere in this area. Next, we shimmed up the cabinets to make sure the units were all level and plump. I really like the way the black cabinet looks against the brown brick. It's a nice pairing. Beautiful. Right? Yeah. We have to space out for the inch and a quarter granite countertop. Oh. So we need to make a spacer. Because once these cabinets are mounted, mm -hmm. the granite needs to be able to slip right beneath these two. So we've got to be pretty dead on. Because the bottom of the oven you bought is completely flat, right. there's no feet, it's going to slide on all four of these ripped down 2 by 4s They're going to act as glides, and then the oven's going to slide right on top of it. All right, well, it's snug in there. It's secure. Right. Unbelievable. I mean, this is like nine months, Mark. Waited for this. It is unbelievable. The black mm -hmm. and the stainless, I mean, it looks like it was made for this kitchen. It really does look beautiful. And now it's time to replace the old sliding door. Dave and I went around, we took down all the casement molding, all the trim, the interior, the brick molding on the outside, and then this one little strip of wood up top, which is called a stop. And that stops the door from falling out or keeps it in. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it was just enough in that there channel. Right okay, there. I have it. Bye. That's it for that. All right, we're going to take the reciprocating saw, I'll make a cut here, and then right through the middle of the jam, fold in the old uh, jam and frame. Then we'll bring in the new sliding doors with the frame and then work on getting that into this rough opening. So it's going to basically fit in the exact same footprint. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's correct. Okay, we'll get this all cleaned up here. Dave's coming in with some pieces of wood that we're going to use to line the rough opening which is what we're going to call packing out. A 
real quick tip how to make your life easy. If you're screwing a board in vertically and you have to hold the screws and get them started, just lay it down on the ground, start your screws, and then they'll be in place when you're ready to screw them into place. Since the replacement door hasn't arrived yet, we took the time to get a jump on sealing the slate floor. Okay, so our job is to provide this floor with a stain and moisture barrier. Because it's slate, it's a natural stone, it is very porous. So by putting this acrylic sealer on, we will stop it from anything seeping into it. Is it going to leave a finish? Is it matte or glossy? It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like a semi-gloss. Oh, so good. it's going to bring all these beautiful colors to life. Perfect. Now in a few minutes, we're going to have to reach over and wipe off all the excess. After six to eight months, you can test if your sealer is still working by pouring water on the floor and see if it beads up. If the water seeps through, it's time to reapply. All right, we're just about there. Another application, it's as simple as it just was for us. Wonderful, and it looks beautiful. It looks awesome. It's late in the day, and the new sliding door has finally arrived. So this particular patio door comes in a kit, and this frame has to be put together. So you see it's, it's vinyl wrapped wood. Right. They've put some silicone and some glue. And once the four pieces are together, then we'll have the actual frame of the door that the doors are gonna slide on. We'll get that set in place, plumb it, level it. Once that's all set, then we can actually take the doors and then insert the doors. The same way that we took the doors off of your old unit, we're gonna put the new doors into the new unit. Okay. For more information on how to install sliding doors, go to DIYNetwork.com. Coming up on Kitchen Impossible, an unimaginable transformation. It looks beyond any dream we could have had. When we return. This massive kitchen renovation is almost complete. During the last few days, the granite countertops arrived and were installed, as well as the gorgeous natural stone backsplash with metal accents. We finished the cabinet refacing by installing molding and the hardware. The refrigerator, cooktop, and wine fridge were all installed. And then we grouted the floors and the backsplash, as well as freshened up the room with a new coat of paint. So we do have one final project to do, and that's install this footrest. Because we are going to have a total of five bar stools okay. around this entire island. Okay. We have to figure out where to mount the supports. Okay. So we definitely need to, to drill into the studs that are right. in this knee wall here. Do a little marking right here. So I have the top leg bolt marked out. And you take your drill and then drill directly. Because this leg bolt is so thick, we definitely need to pre-drill. Okay, we'll probably have to go through this door and feed it through because okay. it's so long. And then once we get this on, it's basically repeating the process for the small okay. return. And then we can get this kitchen clean and in tip-top condition. Look at what you started. Look at the <laughs> chaos you caused okay. us. And look at the perfection that we finished. We haven't had a, a warm meal in nine months, so this is going to be amazing, just amazing. It looks beyond any dream we could have had. It really does. And we had a lot of great help here. We had Robin and his crew in to reface these ugly cabinets. They're 22 years old, they've had their, their hey, life listen, with if only I could be made to look, look younger as okay. fast as they did. <laughs> this kitchen was old-fashioned and not functional. Now it's updated and is filled with amazing amenities. By removing a closet, we made room for a pass-through into the den as well as a bar area. We upgraded the old island to a much larger one complete with a new cooktop and amazing granite countertops. This is where your old, ugly, broken wall oven was. Yes, right? indeed it is. So they were able to retrofit this old cabinet. So when you guys are having your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you can watch your episodes of Kitchen Impossible. That's Absolutely. right. Thank you very much. Removing the laminate floor and installing natural slate tile was the perfect addition to tie the whole room together. Everything about it, getting rid of that peninsula, just opening it up, opening up the wall to the den, is a whole different kind of feeling in here, and I think we're going to get a lot of use out of it.